The Rally Bicycle Company is a bicycle manufacturer based in Nottingham, England. Founded by Woodhead and Angoas in 1885, who used Rally as their brand name, it is one of the oldest bicycle companies in the world. After being acquired by Frank Bowden, it became the Rally Cycle Company in December 1888, which was registered as a limited liability company in January 1889. By 1913, it was the biggest bicycle manufacturing company in the world. From 1921 to 1935, Rally also produced motorcycles and three-wheel cars, leading to the formation of the Reliant Company. The Rally division of bicycles is currently owned by the Dutch corporation Excel. In 2006, the Rally Chopper was named in the list of British design icons in the Great British Design Quest organised by the BBC and the Design Museum. History Early years The history of Rally Bicycles started in 1885, when Richard Morris Woodhead from Sherwood Forest, and Paul Eugene Louis Angoas, a French citizen, set up a small bicycle workshop in Rally Street, Nottingham, England. In the spring of that year, they started advertising in the local press. The Nottinghamshire Guardian of 15 May 1885 printed what was possibly the first Woodhead and Angoas classified advertisement. Nearly two years later, the 11th of April 1887 issue of the Nottingham Evening Post contained a display advertisement for the Rally Safety model under the new banner Woodhead, Angoas, and Ellis. Russell Street Cycle Works, William Ellis had recently joined the partnership and provided much needed financial investment. Like Woodhead and Angoas, Ellis's background was in the lace industry. He was a lace gasser, a service provider involved in the bleaching and treating of lace, with premises in nearby Clare Street and Glasshouse Street. Thanks to Ellis, the bicycle works had now expanded round the corner from Raleigh Street into former lace works on the adjoining road, Russell Street. By 1888, the company was making about three cycles a week and employed around half a dozen men. It was one of 15 bicycle manufacturers based in Nottingham at that time. Frank Bowden, a recent convert to cycling who, on medical advice, had toured extensively on a tricycle, first saw a rally bicycle in a shop window in Queen Victoria Street, London, about the time that William Ellis's investment in the cycle workshop was beginning to take effect. Bowden described how this led to him visiting the Rally Works. In the early part of 1887, while looking for a good specimen of the then new safety bicycle, I came across a Rally in London. Its patent changeable gear and other special features struck me as superior to all the others I had seen, and I purchased one upon which I toured extensively through France, Italy and England during 1887 and 1888. In the autumn of the latter year, happening to pass through Nottingham, and with the idea of, if possible, getting a still more up-to-date machine, I called upon Messrs. Woodhead and Angoas, the originators and makers of the rally. It is clear from Frank Bowden's own account that, although he bought a rally safety in 1887, he did not visit the rally workshop until autumn 1888. 
That visit led to Bowden replacing Ellis as the partnership's principal investor, though Bowden did not become the outright owner of the firm. He concluded that the company had a profitable future if it promoted its innovative features, increased its output, cut its overhead costs and tailored its products to the individual tastes and preferences of its customers. He bought out William Ellis's share in the firm and was allotted £5,001 shares, while Woodhead and Angoas between them held another 5,000 shares. In Frank Bowden's own lifetime, rally publicity material stated that the firm was founded in 1888, which was when Bowden, as he himself confirmed, first bought into the enterprise. Thus, Raleigh's 30th anniversary was celebrated in 1918. The 1888 foundation date is confirmed by Bowden's great-grandson, Gregory Houston Bowden, who states that Frank Bowden began to negotiate with Woodhead and Angoas and in December 1888 founded the Raleigh Cycle Company. The December 1888 foundation date is also confirmed by Nottinghamshire archives. In recent years, the Raleigh Company has cited 1887 as a foundation date but, whilst this pre-dates Bowden's involvement, the Raleigh brand name was created by Woodhead and Angoas and the enterprise can, as demonstrated above, be traced back to 1885. The company established by Bowden in December 1888 was still privately owned with unlimited public liability. In January 1889, it became the first of a series of limited liability companies with Raleigh in its name. It had a nominal capital of £20,000, half of which was provided by Frank Bowden. Paul Angoas was appointed director responsible for product design, Richard Woodhead was made director responsible for factory management, and Frank Bowden became chairman and managing director. Some shares were made available to small investors and local businessmen, but take-up was minimal, and Bowden ended up buying most of the public shares. He subsequently supplied virtually all the capital needed to expand the firm. When Frank Bowden got involved with the enterprise, the works comprised three small workshops and a greenhouse. As Woodhead, Angoas, and Ellis, the firm had expanded round the corner from Raleigh Street into Russell Street, where also stood Clark's five story former lace factory. To enable further expansion of the business, Bowden financed the renting of this property and installation of new machinery. Under Bowden's guidance, Raleigh expanded rapidly. By 1891, the company occupied not only Clark's factory but also Woodroffe's factory and Russell Street Mills. In November 1892, Raleigh signed a tenancy agreement for rooms in Butler's factory on the other side of Russell Street. Shortly after this, the company also occupied Forest Road Mill, Forest Road junctions with Russell Street at the opposite end from Raleigh Street. Bowden created a business which, by 1913, was the biggest bicycle manufacturing company in the world, occupying seven and a half acres in purpose-built premises completed in 1897 at Faraday Road, Lenton, Nottingham. It subsequently became very much bigger. Sir Frank Bowden died in 1921 and his son Sir Harold Bowden, 2nd Baronet took over as Chairman and Chief Executive, guiding the company through the next 17 years of expansion. 
Humber Cyclus there was a resurgence in domestic and export demand for pedal bicycles and by February 1932 Raleigh had acquired all the Humber Limited trademarks. Manufacture was transferred to Raleigh's Nottingham Works. Raleigh made Humbers differed from Raleigh's only in chain wheels, fork crowns, and some brakework. During the Second World War, the Raleigh factory in Nottingham was used for the production of fuzzes. Bicycle production was reduced to approximately 5% of its peacetime capacity. In 1939, Raleigh opened a bicycle factory at 6 Hanover Quay, Dublin, Ireland, and commenced bicycle production there. The Raleigh Ireland business expanded and moved to 8 to 11 Hanover Quay, Dublin in 1943. The plant produced complete bicycles and Sturmey Archer hubs, and remained in production until 1976, when the factory burned down. Models produced there latterly were the Chopper and Triumph 20. The head badges changed in the late 1960s, possibly after the passing of the Trade Descriptions Act in the UK. Dublin made machines no longer had Nottingham England on the Heron or Triumph head badge, the panel being left blank instead. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Motor vehicles. In 1899, Raleigh started to build motorcycles and in 1903, introduced the Raleigh, a belt-driven three-wheel motorcycle with the driver in the back and a wicker seat for the passenger between the two front wheels. Financial losses meant production lasted only until 1908. In 1930, the company acquired the rights to the Ivy Carrile, a motorcycle fitted with a cabin for cargo and a hood for the driver. Raleigh's version was called the light delivery van and had a chain drive. A two-passenger version was followed by Raleigh's first three-wheel car, the Safety 7. It was a four-seat convertible with shaft drive and a maximum of 55 miles per hour, 89 kilometers per hour. A saloon version was planned, but Raleigh shut its motor department to concentrate on bicycles again. Chief designer T. L. Williams took the equipment and remaining parts and moved to Tamworth, where his company produced three wheelers for 65 years. The leftover parts from Raleigh carried an R, so Williams chose a matching name, Reliant. Raleigh also made mopeds in the late 1950s and 1960s as the bicycle market declined. The most popular of which was the RM6 runabout. This model featured unsprung front forks and a cycle-type caliper front brake which made it a very affordable mode of transport. Because of its success, production continued until February 1971, 17 months after Raleigh had stopped manufacturing all other mopeds. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Post-war US export market. After World War II, Raleigh became known for its lightweight sports roadster bicycles, often using Sturmey Archer 3 and 5 speed transmissions. These cycles were considerably lighter and quicker than either the old heavy English utility roadster or the American balloon tire cruiser bikes. In 1946, Raleigh and other English bicycle manufacturers accounted for 95% of the bicycles imported into the United States. Raleigh's sports roadster, or British racer bicycles, were exported around the world, including the United States. 
The company continued to increase imports to the United States until 1955, when a rate increase in foreign bicycle tariffs caused a shift in imports in favor of bicycles from West Germany and the Netherlands. However, this proved only a temporary setback, and by 1964, Rally was again a major selling brand in the U.S. bicycle market. Topic. Rally RSW In 1965, Rally introduced the RSW-16, its long-awaited competitor to the hugely successful Moulton bicycle. The new rally shared several important features with the Moulton, including small wheels, an open frame and built-in luggage carrying capacity. However, the RSW lacked the Moulton suspension, which compensated for the bumpy ride that comes with small wheels. Instead, Rally fitted the RSW with balloon tires, which effectively smoothed the ride but at the cost of increased rolling resistance. Nevertheless, the RSW was pleasant to ride, and Rally's extensive retail network ensured its success. The success of the RSW took sales away from the Moulton and put the maker into financial difficulties. Rally then bought out Moulton and produced both bikes until 1974. Rally also produced a sister model to the RSW, the 20, which was more successful and remained in production well into the 1980s. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Expansion and mergers. While bicycle production had steadily risen through the mid-1950s, the British market began to decline with the increasing affordability and popularity of the motor car. For much of the post-war era, British bicycle manufacturers had largely competed with each other in both the home and export markets, but 1956 saw the formation of the British Cycle Corporation by the Tube Investments Group which already owned Phillips, Hercules, Armstrong, and Norman. In 1957, Rally bought the BSA Cycles Limited, BSA's bicycle division, which gave them exclusive use of the former brand names New Hudson and Sunbeam. Rally also already owned the Robin Hood brand, and three spires with Triumph cycles also at their disposal. BSA had itself acquired Triumph Cycle Co. Limited only five years previously. T added the Sun Bicycle Company to their stable in 1958, and with two super groups now controlling a large portion of the market, it was perhaps inevitable that in 1960, Tube Investments acquired Rally and merged the British Cycle Corporation with Rally to form TI Rally, which now had 75% of the UK market. TI Rally then acquired Carlton Cycles in Worksop, England that same year, at the time one of the largest semi-custom lightweight makers in the UK. T Rally gave total control of its cycle division to Rally and soon set about marketing many of the acquired names as budget ranges, though with Rally frames. The old British Cycle Corporation factory at Handsworth continued to produce non-Rally branded product well into the 1970s, with Rally branded models built in the main plant at Nottingham. However, the Sun branded bicycles were made in the Carlton factory at Worksop, England. 
As a vertically integrated manufacturer in the mid 1960s, TI Rally owned Brooks, one of the oldest saddle makers in the world, Sturmey Archer, pioneer of three-speed hubs, and Reynolds, maker of 531 tubing. Carlton, which had been unable to make inroads in the USA market after a failed rebranding deal with Huffy, found success in the late 1960s by recasting itself as Rally Carlton, a rally logoed bike with some Carlton badging, and using the U.S. dealer network to import and distribute bikes. The Rally Chopper The Rally Chopper was designed by Nottingham native Alan Oakley, though this has been disputed by Cambridge designer Tom Caron. The Chopper was patented in the UK in 1967 and patented in the US in 1968. The bike was the must have item and signifier of coolness for many children at the time. The chopper was first available for sale in June 1969 in North America. It went on sale in the UK in 1970 and sold well, and was a key factor in reviving the company's fortunes. The chopper featured a three-speed Sturmey Archer gear hub, shifted using a top tube-mounted gear lever reminiscent of the early Harley-Davidson suicide shifter—one of its cool features. Other differences were the unusual frame, long padded seat with backrest, sprung suspension at the back, high-rise handlebars, and differently sized front 16 and rear 20 inches wheels tires were wider than usual for the time with a chunky tread on the rear wheel featuring red highlights on the sidewall the price was from approximately 32 pounds for a standard chopper to 55 pounds for the deluxe two smaller versions the chipper and tomahawk also sold well the MK2 Chopper was an improved version from 1972. It had the option of five-speed derailleur gears in the United States, but all UK bikes had the three-speed hub, with the exception of a model introduced in 1973 and only available in a bizarre shade of pink. This model was discontinued in 1976. The MK2 had a shorter seat and the frame modified to move the rear of the seat forward, this helped prevent the bike tipping up. The shorter seat also made it harder to ride two, up two people on the bike at a time. The chopper remained in production until 1982, when the rising popularity of the BMX bicycle caused sales to drop off. Rally revisited the chopper design in recent times, with great success although the new version has had some changes to conform to modern safety laws. Gone is the top tube shifter and long integrated seat, but the look and feel of the bike remain. Topic. 1979 present reorganizations In 1979, production of Rally 531 butted tube bicycles reached 10,000 units a year. In 1980, the former Carlton factory at Worksop closed and production was moved to a lightweights facility at Nottingham. However, all bicycles made there afterwards still carried the W for workshop frame number designation. In 1982, rights to the Rally USA name were purchased by the Huffy Corporation. 
Under the terms of the agreement, Rally of England licensed Huffy to design and distribute rally bicycles in the U.S., and Huffy was given instant access to a nationwide network of bike shops. The renamed Rally Cycle Company of America sold bikes in the U.S. while the rest of the world, including Canada, received Rally of England bikes. At that time, production of some U.S. rally models were shifted to Japan, with Bridgestone manufacturing most of these bikes. By 1984, all rallies for the American market, except the top-of-the-range Team Professional made in Ilkeston and Prestige Road Bikes made in Nottingham, were produced in the Far East. Meanwhile, in the home market, Rally had broken into the new UK BMX market with their burner range, which was very successful. In 1987, the leading German bicycle manufacturer Derby Cycle bought Rally from T and Rally USA from Huffy. In 1988, Derby opened a factory in Kent, Washington manufacturing two rally lines, the bimetallic Technium Road Bike Line, which used heat-treated aluminum main frame tubes, thermally bonded and heat-cured to internal steel lugs using a Boeing-developed proprietary epoxy—along with chromoly steel head tube and rear stays. Kent also manufactured the off-road chromoly steel altimetric line Tangent CX, Traverse CX, Tactic CX and Talon CX 1991-1992. The factory closed in 1994. All Rally Cycle Company of America parts and frames from 1995 on were then mass produced in China and Taiwan and assembled in other plants. The high end frame sets offered for sale in rally catalogues, together with the frames built for team riders, were produced in Ilkeston by the Special Bicycle Developments Unit from 1974 to 1989 under the guidance of Gerald V. O'Donovan. This production was moved to a new Rally Special Products. Division in Nottingham on closure of the Kent factory. Rally Canada had a factory in Waterloo, Quebec from 1972 to 2013. Derby Cycle acquired Diamondback Bicycles in 1999. In the same year, Rally ceased volume production of frames in the UK and its frame making equipment were sold by auction. In 2000, Derby Cycle controlled Rally USA, Rally UK, Rally Canada, and Rally Ireland. In the latter three markets, Rally was the number one manufacturer of bicycles. Derby Cycle began a series of divestitures, because of financial pressure and sold Sturmey Archer's factory site to the University of Nottingham and Sturmey Archer and saddle manufacturer Brooks to a small company called Lenark. Lenark promised to build a new factory in Caverton but failed to pay the first installment and the company entered liquidation. It was reported that the reason for selling the business, after extracting the cash for the factory site, was to have Lenark declare it insolvent so that neither Derby nor Lenark would have to pay the redundancy costs. Sturmey Archer's assets were acquired by Sunrace of Taiwan who relocated the factory to Taiwan and sales to the Netherlands. Sister company Brooks was sold to Cell Royal of Italy. In 2001, following continuing financial problems at Derby Cycle, there was a management buyout of all the remaining rally companies led by Alan Finden Crofts. By 2003, assembly of bicycles had ended in the UK with 280 assembly and factory staff made redundant, and bicycles were to come 
from Vietnam and other centers of low cost, high quality production. With final assembly takes place in Klappenberg, Germany. In 2012, Derby was acquired by PON, a Dutch company, as part of their new bicycle group, which also owns Gazelle and Cervelo. PON now sell Rally under license throughout Germany. In April 2012, Rally UK, Canada, and USA were acquired by a separate Dutch group Excel for £62 million, $100 million whose portfolio includes the Lapierre and Ghost bicycle brands. Sport Rally had a long association with cycle sport. Most notable is the TI Rally team of the 1970s and 1980s. In 1980 Jupe Zoetemelk won the Tour de France on a rally. In the mid-1980s the rally team was co-sponsored by Panasonic. In 1984, riding rally badged bicycles, Team USA scored several impressive victories at the Olympic Games in Los Angeles. The company also supplied bicycles to the French Systeme U team in the late 1980s where Laurent Fignon lost the 1989 Tour de France to Greg Lemond by 8 seconds. The company's special products division made race frames, including those used by the Rally Professional team of the 1970s. Presently Rally as a company owns the Diamondback bike brand as well. During the 1980s Rally also supported British professional teams, including Rally Banana and Rally Weinman. Rally's most notable riders were Paul Sherwin, Malcolm Elliott, Mark Bell, Paul Watson, John Clay and Jeff Williams. It also sponsored a mountain bike team in the early 1990s that also raced in road events. In 2009 it was announced that the company would be creating a new continental level cycling team called Team Rally. The team were co-sponsored by the global shipping and logistics firm GAC in 2012 and were known as Team Rally GAC. The season was notable for Team Rally's first victory in the Tour Series Round 6 and a succession of Premier Calendar wins, which resulted in team rider Graham Briggs finishing the season at the top of British Cycling's UK Elite Men's Standings. Rally once again became the sole headline sponsor of the team in 2013 and the team repaid the investment with high-profile wins in the Tour de Normandie, Tour of the Reservoir and Tour Series Rounds 1 and 2. <laughs> Archives The Rally archives, including the Sturmey Archer papers, are at Nottinghamshire Record Office. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Historic models. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> In media. Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, the 1958 debut novel by Alan Silito, is partly set in Raleigh's Nottingham factory, Silito himself being an ex-employee of the firm. Several scenes for the 1960 film adaptation starring Albert Finney were filmed on location at the factory itself. In the 1985 movie American Flyers, David Summers played by David Marshall Grant, is seen riding through St. Louis, Missouri, on a rally bicycle from that same era. 
Later in the film, specialized bicycles are used for the race scenes in Colorado and training. In the 1986 Bike Messenger film Quicksilver a variety of Rally USA bicycles are used. 1984–85 road bikes are used throughout by notable players in the movie. Kevin Bacon's bicycle is a single-speed rally competition. While no differentiation is made in the film, at least three different configurations are seen on Bacon's bike during the movie, fixed gear, single speed, and outfitted with zero-degree trick forks during various scenes in Bacon's apartment. A possible freewheel is suggested early in the film when Bacon dismounts while in motion and a distinct clicking sound is heard until the bike stops moving. A 1984 Fifths Rally Grand Prix is used for the opening chase sequence, and a 1984 A85 Super Course makes a brief appearance in the opening credits. Topic. See also The Fun Zimbabwe Ride 2009 Rally donated bicycles to ensure the ride would take place.